I was on my way to the National Monument, but I saw the entrance to the Valles Caldera National Preserve. It's a giant caldera, and you could drive in there, and some of the reviews say it takes you up to the, some of the ridges, maybe up in the mountain. But it's just a big gravel road and lots of driving. It's amazing. It's just huge open field, and there's supposedly, well, there's signs everywhere that say, look out for elk, but uh, I haven't seen any. Yeah, but it's a very bumpy road, but it's just out in the middle of nowhere. So take a look here. All right, I have big plans. We're gonna drive up this. I got my little permit to drive up the road. So I'm gonna drive up the road, do the whole okay. drivable. But I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna do this hike. It's seven and a half miles round trip, 1500 feet of gain. And the ranger just said that it's got beautiful views from there. So I'm totally doing it. It's gonna be high up there, over 10,000 feet. But uh, it should be feeling fine. I've been sleeping at over 9,000, so cool. So about 1.25 million years ago, this giant thing was a huge volcano. It abrupted tons of ash and sediment, and then the whole thing just sunk in itself. So it became this gigantic caldera. caldera. Like, you see a lot of volcanoes in Arizona, New, New Mexico, but like end to end, I mean, that's not even the end. That's the middle area <laughs> that I'm seeing on my left here. That's the middle, and it's just super, super, I mean, it's un unimaginably gigantic. So I got a permit. You need the permit to drive up the road because it closes at six and you gotta turn it in later. It's not much of a permit. You just get this and you hang it in your mirror. But we're gonna drive up. Hopefully it's not too busy. I guess it goes up some of the calderas and we're gonna park at one of them, or one of the parking areas and hike up to the top. 1500 feet, no biggie. Over three miles, that's super mild. Hopefully it's okay. But I think I just threw out my entire National Monument plan out the window <laughs> because I was going to go there, but this is pretty cool. I mean, I saw it on the map. I didn't think it was going to be that cool, but as I drove by, it's just this huge open meadow. It's just amazing. And it's weird that over all this time, over a million years, that trees didn't fill in this meadow. I wonder why, I wonder why it's so clear. It must be constant fires like lightning hitting it, but... The weather's beautiful, mostly cloudy, but no sign of any possible rain. So let's go have fun. It's all dirt road. It's going to be about 44 miles of dirt road to go up, go left, go right, go back to the trailhead, hike up the to the viewpoint, back down and drive back down. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's uh, let's get started. First, we've got to get to the chain gate and get through. Just amazing wide open meadow views. There's some buildings up ahead. I don't know what's up with that. It's all National Park Service monitored. So unfortunately no drones. I mean drone flying would be amazing here but National Park Service. Gosh it's just so wide open. I should watch out for cars. I'm only driving about 12 miles an hour so not too dangerous. Thank you. 
Here we are at the end of the road. It's all roped off. There are three vehicles here. I don't see anybody. I guess you're hiking around. I didn't see any trails from this spot. I guess you're out hiking around just randomly. But uh, let's head back now and go back towards the other road. The sun is actually quite strong. I feel it when it's on my arms. I might actually hike with my uh, sun umbrella. <laughs> Yeah. Is it stereotypical being like the Asian with the uh, sun umbrella? Maybe I should get those white arm length gloves. But yeah, let's head back. Beautiful area for a leisurely drive through. Just big rock formations and we're still in the caldera. It's so big and you could just see, I think that's maybe the rim of the caldera. And off to the right is the resurgence area, which is like after it collapsed, some of the lava pushed back and created new peaks in the middle of the caldera. It's pretty insane how gigantic it is. I I just never thought anything was so big. I thought it was like a gigantic meteor crater because it's just so big, so big. I'll have to get the dimensions for how wide it is um, once it get some research done. I didn't see it anywhere in the uh, documents I saw. Oh, dusty, everything's dusty. All right, I'm heading up this trail now. It's seven and a half miles. Uh, someone told me it's 1,800 feet. The ranger at the visitor center said it was 1,500 feet total elevation. Up, I don't know, maybe there's some up and downs, so it comes up to 18. But I got my trekking poles because I like to use them when I go up. And I got my big camera and a whole bunch of other, well, I don't have too much other stuff because there's no drone, drones allowed here, so. All I really have is two liters of water, a Snickers bar, a Cliff bar. Normally I like to have a bagel or something, but I don't have any more. <laughs> I don't have any more bread at all. I gotta resupply tomorrow. But uh, I do have a Snickers bar because I kept three in the refrigerator. I always keep three just in case for Tina, just in case. Better to have it in case she's hungry, you know? So I have three, I have 
two in the fridge now. So I have one in my pack. I put it away inside so I hope the sun doesn't melt it by the time I eat it. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to be hungry by the time lunch starts up. So seven and a half miles. It's going to take, I don't know, two and a half. I think I'm going to sit up there. Uh, my plan was to sit up there and take a time lapse, but uh, I have neither the tripod nor the camera. Actually, I do have a camera. I don't have a tripod. Ah, I got to go back to the car. Arr, it's way over there. So far away. One mile. I'm just, I just rounded up, so I have eight. So this means I have seven miles to go. I swear, I thought I did at least two. I was going really fast. At least I was out of breath and there's been a lot of up, but only one mile. At least it's clearly marked and it's all up this road. So pretty easy to follow. Two and a half mile, more miles up. I am winded, but up ahead. We're going up there somewhere. You can see the trail on the bottom. It actually loops way out. And if we go behind this mountain here to the edge of the National Forest and preserve, and then we come back up. So it's up there somewhere, one of these. I'm thinking it's that one over there because it's a little more prominent. I don't know. We shall see and we will find out. We will find out. Beautiful day. Little irises down here. Unfortunately, they're kind of dried out, so I couldn't get any good pictures, but whew, I'm out of breath. It's probably about three and a half miles up. Well, I guess 3.75, 1.8 thousand feet up. It's, uh, it's only like averages out to 500 feet per mile or so, but it's a doozy. We are above 9,000. And uh, I thought for sure that I'd be okay by now because I climbed Mount Taylor just like a week ago. And then I've been sleeping at like 9,000 feet over and over. But whew, I'm winded. <laughs> I'm not even to the top yet, but the views are amazing. You can see the roads that you can drive and you can see the the rejuvenated, or I forget the term, <laughs> regenerated like cones in the middle. And then you can see the entire outline of the caldera going all along the outside. And it's insane. It's insane how big it is. Whew. This is one of those hikes where it's uh it's not super tough but it is tough but it is worth it oh my gosh i'm not even to the top yet Up ahead is a gate that's actually going to the National Forest, so I'm sure it's locked because there are no cars allowed over here. 
But here's a little side trail. And this should go straight to the top pretty soon. A little bit up, we're almost there. I hope I'm going the right way. Uh, after that turn, you pretty much hit the fence, barbed wire fence. And I went up the fence until I saw it looks like an old, super old road. No tread at all, but uh, it's a road just because it's kind of flatter. And uh, it's going towards the top-ish. So I figured this is it. I don't know. There's a lot of broken branches on the trees. So I figured this has been well traveled. Like right here, there's a gap of broken branches. Even if I go, I don't get to the very top here. It looks like on the left. It looks like I'll get amazing views. And that's, that's what's important. Uh, we're up here. Ah, looks like it goes back down. Must be a really, really old road. Oh yeah, so many trees. Whew, tough trail. Problem is now, I was thinking I have to get back. It's gonna take about an hour and a half to get back. I gotta leave the park by six. Um, so I got a hour and a half and I was gonna take a half hour time lapse. And uh, wow. I'm not going that way. Holy cow. It looks like there's a slight path here. I'll go that way. Fortunately, I don't have a full pack, so it's easy to squat down. As I was saying, I got about an hour and a half hike back. This stuff's gonna slow me down. But uh, probably have another 30 minutes to drive to the back. That'll be, it's two hours and another 30 minutes to uh, Maybe I should have gone further north and then hooked over. So I'm back to the barbed wire fence. It looks like the trail on the map goes further up before it hooks right. And there's more trees in the way, but to the right, it's all trees. There's no way I can go right here. So I'll just keep following next to the fence for a while and see what happens. Here's the fence and here's another road. This one's dirt road. Doesn't look like there are many trees in front of us. In fact, after a few, there's mostly living trees. So there won't be in as many trees across the trail probably, if this is the trail. But maybe this is it. The wind's getting stronger. It's getting clearer. So that was the right trail. A lot more elk droppings up here. Oh yeah, this is it. I like to record the summit so we can all share this together. Oh, it's getting windy. Here we come. Here we go. Oh yeah. Time to take off the hat. Woo! I have to say, First quarter mile was easy. Then it was moderate until I got to the border. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wide open views. Oh wow. The Katina burn area is so well from up here. There's a trail below. Really distinct burn area line. Oh, there's water. Wow. So windy. That road over there going forward, that's the way out. And eventually it hooks. I don't know where we get out, but wow. Look at the cinder cones. Well, I guess the outside of the caldera all along the outer border. Holy cow, the camera's shaking. It's so windy. I believe we are also on the outer border. We're right in the middle of the rejuvenated cones. I forget the name, sorry, it's with an R. I'll put it in a video on the bottom there. But that one and a little one, I was trying to look for it, but I totally looked it for, I was trying to look for it before I had to drive up. I was looking at the wrong things. 
from here they're incredibly obvious. What's fascinating is how the caldera is largely flat. It's not like sunken in. I mean, once you get past the walls, it's quite amazing. I'll set up a camera. I'm actually gonna hang out in the sun because it's very cool in the shade. And there's a trail below us. Wow. Rewarding hike with a lot of bushwhacking at the end, sort of. Whew. Wow. The views look amazing on your screen. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Such a flat caldera. And then check out the two cones in the middle. There's another cone, actually, a third one. It's amazing. Whew. All right, let's put this guy away and then uh, set up the time lapse. I have to leave 30 minutes top, so let's get going. Bummer, before I started this hike, this thing was nice and cold, but now it's all melted. So I'm gonna have to eat it like this. Cause I'm kind of hungry, like that. Kind of like a poop bar. Gotta do what you gotta do, but look at these views. This Snickers bar is gonna be delicious, staring at this. The time lapse should come out nice with all the clouds moving around. Time to eat. As I was saying before, I'll let you enjoy the views while I talk. I have about an hour and a half climb down, 30 minutes drive out. So that's two hours to get out. It's three o'clock right now. And I'm, I'll be, the time lapse is going, so it's probably got another 25 minutes. So I'll be pushing it. I'll be uh, getting out of here right around 5.30. 5.25. five thirty maybe. Pushing it close, but um, I'm gonna hike really fast down because it's pretty easy down, except the first part because I gotta climb all over those trees again. But man, worth it, worth it. There's nobody up here. I mean, it could be anybody all along this rim, but I didn't see anybody. So there were only three cars down there, but I think they hike down and they do like various other cones down there. Nobody up here though, weird. Come on up though, definitely come on up. All right, I finished up the time lapse, ate my bars, and now I'm heading down. I'm actually gonna hurry down, but it's not windy here, so it's actually kind of nice, but all right, I'm not gonna talk to you anymore until the very bottom, unless something interesting come up, comes up. But it has to be really interesting because I am just gonna put it away and race. I'm gonna try to go like three and a half, four miles an hour. So, I will see you at the car. All right, bye. I was wondering if I'd be able to see where I was, but you can. Way over there, there's a tree in the middle, and there's a little dead tree right on the right and a bunch of trees to the right. So basically, smack dab in the middle of the video, I'll point an arrow to it. I was, stay I was sitting just to its right, our right. Just sitting there. I was right there. Quite beautiful. These are kind of dried out as well. Actually, some are in excellent condition. A lot I saw have been really dried out, but these actually are amazing. Let's just take a whole bunch of photos of these. We got about three quarters of a mile, but uh, I've been having like nausea upset stomach. Like uh, from the top, I basically ran until I got to the south side of the hill there. And uh, that was just about 10,000 feet. I'm wondering if I shouldn't have overexerted myself at that altitude. Cause I feel like throwing up. Kind of feel like, well, those were if you just throw up, just feel better. 
I think I'm almost there. It's a pretty easy grade from here on. I'm gonna hold it in. Take it easy. Really, if I take it easy, because I'm still going down in altitude, I should feel better and better. In fact, I do feel better already. Whew. Just slowing down, I think, helped me a ton. But there was a good chance I was gonna feed all the birds and chipmunks out here some half-digested cliff bar blueberry. There's my car. And I'm the last one. <laughs> there were two other cars there. Plus there was a, a lady that was hiking. Her husband dropped her off, so he was just driving around. But she wasn't sure where she, how far she was gonna go. But uh, I'm the last one. Just me and the porta potty. And I think there's a cow over there. As we get closer, I have to say, I feel so much better. I don't feel like throwing up at all now. I think I was 100% meaning throwing up, I was probably at 80%. But I feel 10%, 10%. Maybe zero, maybe zero. Here we go, let's, let's get out of this park before I get locked in. Oh geez, crazy adventures. This morning I woke up, I didn't even know about this park. I read something about it, but I didn't think I was going to get anywhere near it or I wasn't going to go to it. Well, I am so glad I stopped because that was an awesome adventure. And I hope you enjoyed it. And let's get in the car. It's a really washboardy road, but uh, you can still see some of the meadow there to my left. It's 5.36. I usually don't wait this long to go find dispersed camping. Um, hopefully there's still plenty available, but I'm looking, I targeted this little area in the Santa Fe National Forest right off of the paved road. I'm hoping that there's still some there because it's relatively easy to access and it's probably what I can tell in the satellite pictures, not too bad. Um, we shall see. It's awfully close to town too, so there's gonna be a lot of people. I don't know. I hope I don't have to drive much, much, much later trying to find another spot. Because of this area and the um, National Monument, it takes up a lot of land. So there's National Forest just here and there, but as we get closer to Santa Fe, of course, there's just more is Espanola? I don't know. But there's just more private land as well, so it's getting harder and harder. So wish me luck. I'll, I'll I'll meet you there and tell you about my feet and a weird pain I have. Nothing connective tissue-wise, it's just like calluses causing problems. This is me sitting in the back of the car. I have this little platform. I just kind of sit here, cross-leg. Usually I keep the door open if it's especially if it's nice out or if it's warm in here. Just to let the cool air in and I could stick my leg out too. But I thought I'd show you my feet. Now what's been going on is my feet, the calluses, it's getting a bit way better than it was. But they're they're flaking. They're not necessarily just hard or cracking. They're flaking like scales. So there's little pieces constantly. Um, and sometimes they're sharp. Like I was actually rubbing my feet and I actually got one stuck in my finger like a like a splinter because of a callus. So I thought I'd show you my feet and tell you what happened today that's making it kind of sore right now. Yep, it's not pretty, but uh, it's gotten so much better. Just this little area here. It used to be the entire foot was just flaking like this. And I don't know if you can see, they're little pieces and sometimes they'll just peel off what happened today was I found, I didn't realize until I got to my car, is a lot of these 
pieces were actually just peeling off inside the sock and then piling up at one point and then causing a hot spot. So all the little debris in my shoe were inside my sock and calluses. There's nothing from outside that was in my sock. It was all these little pieces of calluses. And got a little hot spot here. I think it'll get better pretty quickly. And I don't think there'll be a blister, but obviously all the blister, all the calluses here peeled off during the hike. And I have some more. I still have a couple of cracks, but the cracks are doing much, much better. I've been putting these on both my feet and then wearing socks. I bought some real thin socks at uh, Walmart last run and it seems to be making things better. It's definitely softer. I'm just going to keep doing it and then uh, hope, hope it uh, clears up. I also have one of these things. It looks dirty now because of the black sock I was wearing. But you actually put it over your pinky toe and it's supposed to keep your toe split and it's supposed to help relieve the Taylor Bunyan or even make it go away according to some YouTube reviewers. So I've been trying to wear this every night. Um, it actually hurts after several hours so I wake up in the middle of the night and when it hurts I take it off. But I'll keep wearing them. Um, I don't wear them when I walk but if I'm sitting here for a long period of time I'll slip them on. Hopefully, hopefully it helps. Has anybody had experience with something like that? I, I'm just hoping it helps because uh, I don't quite know what else to do to fix it. This campsite worked out. Only one car came by looking to see if someone was here, but I've been to better campsites. I mean, there's actually an interesting view back there. It's like a canyon, but you have to walk quite a bit out. But it's actually one of the dirtier campsites I've been. I actually am amazed how much toilet paper there is in one section. Like, why? <laughs> why? So the reason I came back here is there were several cars out there along the road. But this part is, the road's horrible. So the only other car I, come, I saw come by was a Jeep. And then I made it no problem, two-wheel drive. But the road's pretty horrible. You need a high-clearance vehicle. But look at this. What is going on here? Why is this? Why is there so much toilet paper right on the side? Right next to this road. And there's more over here as well. But the sunrise is from there. There's a town over there. And this is the campsite. Not the most level. It's... Um, in retrospect, I probably should have parked over there because the wind coming this way picks up this dust and it hits the car. And I found the problem sometimes is I try to face this side, maybe this corner into the wind. But when the wind comes this way, the dust goes over and then it swirls and sometimes it enters in the windows. <laughs> so you think, I mean, if you parked with this window open, of course the dust would go right in. But the other problem is it swirls, so it'd be ideal to be more forward and have the wind just kind of go around. But it happened a lot, so yesterday I had the door open. Anytime I heard a wind coming, I had to close the door because I knew the dust was going to come swirl. It also comes along the bottom, mostly it goes straight through, but sometimes it swirls a little bit there as well. Even from here, you, you can see a van way out there. He's very tall, so you can see him pretty easily. If it wasn't for all these bushes, we'd be able to see all the other cars. So at least in this spot, we get a bit of privacy. This looks like a road, but it doesn't go anywhere. It just loops right here. There's just like a parking area there, but nothing else here. So I'm actually glad that uh, nobody else came through looking for a spot. Just the one pretty early in the evening, so not bad. Yeah, so if you go along this trail, it actually comes up into this canyon area. I'm not going to go super far. Yeah, pretty wild right here. It starts getting overgrown. Pretty wild. And I think some of that is remnants of the Cafayas Caldera. Or next to it anyway. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this video of my trip to the, I think it's Vallas or Vallas. I don't know if it's like the Spanish pronunciation, it's Vallas. Who knows? But I hope you enjoyed the video. 
you ever get a chance, I'd say definitely check it out. Have at least a few gallons of gas in your tank just so you can make the entire drive and get there early so you can do the hike. And unlike me, you should probably do the hike before you do the rest of the drive because then you could just cancel the drive and just head out um, so you don't cut it too close. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and everything else. And right now I'm still basically near the CDT, a little off. Um, Cuba was to the northwest and Chama is coming up, but I'm going to head east a little bit more, resupply and then head out there. So today I'm just doing chores and, uh, yeah, and then meeting Tina tomorrow at some point. I'll talk to you later. Y'all have a nice day.